What's good, everybody? I'm back again. Yeah, my computer crashed. I'm crunk about it. But, um, yeah, it's your boy DJ F. And, you know, I, once again, I was talking about, and this is part two of mixing and mastering, and we're talking about multiband compressors. And in particular, we're talking about Maximus, which is FL Studios multiband compressor. Uh, we already have covered a few things already, and basically we already talked about the bands, uh, the different frequencies. I hate that. Well, the different frequencies. As you can see, the brightness, and we was talking about that. Uh, and you can just do it like this. Boop. There we go. Whoop. Matter of fact. setting the speed uh yeah and this this particular knob i don't think i actually talked about this this actually allows you to see what uh different transients or your frequencies are looking like when you're either monitoring them or on the bands or even in the basic knee graphical knee scope which you know which is very very exclusive to uh this particular plugin or yes this particular plugin and by the way you can use this on the apple i'm tired of, uh, i mean i'm not I'm yes. I'm tired of people asking me, oh, well, or saying, oh, you can only use this on PC. No, you can use this on Apple. It is very quite possible. Just go to ImageLine.com and look it up. But it's there. Sorry, I, I, I just lost it. I just lost it. But anyways, uh, in particular, we already talked about uh, the different graphical EQs and stuff like that, and all what all these knobs mean in part one. Uh, the reason why I'm doing a part two is because if I talked about, I did a full entire video for this and I tried to speak as fast as possible and it was impossible for me to do this video within 30 minutes. And I could have broke up the video in, in, in 15 to 15, but I don't know. I just didn't and I don't know why I didn't. I just, I just didn't. But anyways, yes. So we basically... I talked about you know inviting certain transients in and what uh, <clears throat> and what they do at, at certain range at certain dynamic ranges uh, in the shelves like the lows, mids, and highs. Uh, now we're gonna actually talk about the great stuff, the sexy stuff, and that is these features in here. Uh, a lot of videos actually uh, do. Well, all the videos I've seen on YouTube, they do not actually talk about this. And not even the guy that I highly respect, Seamless, the R is silent. And, you know, and I guess it's not uh, they're not as important, but they are important. Uh, this particular one, and I'm going to let you listen to this, and I'm not going to do like I did. I made the computer crash. <laughs> Uh, that partic this partic particular mode, ma uh, master mid mode, basically only masters the mid section. It's kind of like an NY compression in in a way, and a mid side of compression. This is something that usually they used to use, or no, nah, they don't used to use. They use when recording a drummer, and it's actually kind of funny to see somebody kind of record record a drummer because they layer two different microphones in 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 a, such a way. That it's either one to the mid and one to the side. <clears throat> so that is one of those things that you, uh, and I don't know that I don't know why they. I guess it was done in NY. They kind of that's why they call it NY compression. But anyways, that's one of the, uh, the things you could do. But it sounds good. It's a personal preference type thing. Uh, you would have to actually bounce the full entire track down to actually see the benefits of actual that particular mode and also this mode right here you can actually hear this as well but it once again yes uh, and this is linear phase filters let me go ahead and uh, turn it off now this particular mode and this particular mode, actually, you would actually have to see, like, you would have to have some type of peak monitoring on your sound card that you're using alongside with your 
um, your, I guess your monitors to actually see what it's doing because now the track itself is not peaking. But once you once you bounce it down, the track not only will it uh, uh, presume the master's uh, effect right, uh, which I have it at six, because like, I, I have the uh, the actual dynamic range or or its loudness to uh, but only reach six and not, and not go any further. But you know it is not peaking at all. But once you bounce it down using linear phase filtering, it's going to calculate the different shelves, the different frequencies. Uh, at a at a higher at a, at a higher rate than usual, it's kind of like uh, a, I guess what what people most people think what HQ is HQ sound is when they you know oh man it's gonna be really high quality. Uh, basically, that's uh, it's bouncing down each and every part of the transient at its highest quality. So so you basically get a better count uh, in result of that you have a better mix at, uh, set at the end. Uh, keep in mind, you just cannot just go and slap this on here. So if you didn't watch part one, I, I highly recommend that you watch part one so you know what brick walling is because if you just slap this on here and it's uh, you just get select default, it's going to sound a, a particular way and you're going to get the ex explanation why it's like that. But, yeah, it's going to sound so much better than, than normal uh, because it's actually calculate the calculations are at a higher rate <clears throat> which means that you're it's going to calculate 20 to 50 uh 20 to 50 uh kilohertz or whatever kilohertz uh higher uh at its exact rate versus then being in between like 45 or whatever whatever this may be and i'm trying to actually put it on the cursor on here just so you can uh, so i can actually see it and you know it will stay true to its actual uh, the, to the actual numbers, because I because I didn't think I was explaining that very correctly or very good because I didn't want y'all to think that I didn't know exactly what it is. And and then this in particular right here, these are representative uh, of what mastering is. Uh, basically, you know when uh, back in the DZ way before I was born, where that oh, okay. I was looking for my dog. Uh, back in the DZ, they would actually mix stuff down to 24 dB, uh, well, negative 24 dB. And uh, before they would uh, send it off to be mastered. And having having your sound, and if you actually uh, look right up here, I actually have this uh, the master volume turned down uh, in retrospect uh, to, to its respective rate of 24 dB. Uh, and that's just just because when you're uh, mastering something, you know, it actually helps when it's not as as loud. Because what the uh, you know you won't be working against the compressor. Because if I was to turn this up higher, and I'm, I guess I just oh man, I don't like doing this, but you know. <laughs> Well, even though it doesn't sound as bad as it could be because all the necessary adjustments have already been made, uh, you can see that it's working, hard, it's working against the uh, compressor now uh, more than ever. <clears throat> so. And it's not as, as, as aggressive. And I think that might be about it. I just want, that's all I wanted to cover, you know. Uh, oh, another thing I want to cover, and, and that's another reason why my uh, PC crashed, was that linear phase filtering is a very, very CPU heavy mode. And I think and master mid and master uh, mid mode is is too also. So if I so having those both on at the same time, you better look out because your computer is bound to, uh, or actually sound might is bound to crash by using both of those modes together. Um, but yeah, those are two great modes that uh, 
that are featured in Maximus. And I'm not going to go off on the limb and say it's not uh, featured in any other uh, multiband compressor. You know, because I only work with uh, one other multiband compressor, and it's much, and it was much like Maximus, and that was in the Waves bundle, and I can't even remember it because I haven't used the Waves. Wait, once I realized that Maximus was something much cheaper than a lot of the stuff that Waves uh, offers, I, I went on ahead and bought it, uh, and I was like, man, you know, I'm gonna roll with this, and you know, FL Studio being probably one of the few. Uh, well, Image Line being one of the few companies that don't kill your pockets every single time they start an update because, you know, it's free updates for forever. Or, I guess, to FL Studio 20 or whatever. I don't know. But they do say lifetime. But, yeah. So, you know, anyways, yeah, if you find this video useful, hopefully you do. Uh,. Give it a like, leave it a leave a comment if you have any more further questions for this part two, and you know subscribe if you haven't subscribed because I will be talking about more mixing and mastering stuff, and I guess I will cover leveling out your overall sounds in a beat, in general, and probably just gonna go ahead and just, just pull up one of my uh, songs for this year because I actually got some good stuff. Some really good stuff and good news. And more stuff that's going to happen for me on MTV. Because MTV is showing me a lot of love with songs that I've been producing. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Appreciate y'all guys. This is your boy DJ Av. And I'm out.